If you're tired of not being a god, then you've stumbled upon the right video, because today we're going to be making a closed terrarium. We'll be making one that has the best chance of outliving you, and maybe us. You'll first need a well-sealed jar. I'm in my favorite liminal space, that of course being the Polish grocery store down the street from my house. Plastic will work better than cheap food jars because those lids tend to rust, but they're not very pretty. And bigger terrariums tend to be easier to stock, but then they get more expensive and you've already spent all your money on that damn NFT. We want something like this. And trust me when I say that this does not smell good. It smells a bit like the Prohibition. We first want to make a drainage layer. For this, you'll want some sort of small stone. The pros use things like Leka, but something like aquarium gravel from a pet store will work just fine. And you can gather your own too. I made a terrarium this summer with my mom and she was on pebble duty. We then need to separate this from the substrate. Don't skip this. As your plant's roots grow, this barrier will keep them from extending into the drainage layer. The two best materials are mesh window screen or weed barrier. Both are extremely cheap at hardware stores. But for my cheaper viewers that like to stab, you can take a piece of plastic and poke holes in it using a thumbtack. Doing this prevents root rot, which is essentially the suffocation of the roots by drowning. Pillow forts are fun. Pillow forts are less fun when they collapse and someone pours a pot of water over the blankets. The next step is optional, but I always do it. A layer of charcoal will help bind toxins in the ecosystem. Your best choice will be horticultural charcoal found in most landscaping departments. You can also use lumpwood charcoal found at hardware stores and some grocery stores. But do not use charcoal briquettes. We need to keep those in stock for Santa. He's giving them out to the kids that were actually fun to be around in elementary school. Substrate is the most important step in the entire building block of a good terrarium. My current favorite is the pre-made Josh's Frogs ABG, which is available for pretty cheap online. But there are other options that you can piece together that others swear by, and I'll throw them on screen. If you're in a pinch, you can scoop substrate from outside, but keep in mind you're risking introducing mold and other pests to the setup. For this method, aim for moist areas near fallen trees and under leaf litter with nice chunks of debris. To kill mold or any potential hitchhikers, it can be baked in the oven. But if you're a risk taker, you can just throw it in. But if slugs take you hostage, you can't say I didn't warn you. I'm now building up the hardscape, and this is where you get to test out your creativity. I'm first using some coral that I snuck through an airport on my vacation. I'm also adding in a stick. Wood from outside can be used, but it should be baked the same way we did the substrate. Plants from extremely humid climates will do the best inside this environment. Oh, like this one. No, that's too big. But there are so many plant options, and I've thrown at least 40 in the description. If you like the board game operation, and you've also picked the most inconvenient shaped jar, then I think you're gonna love this step. I'm first adding our centerpiece plant, this nice asparagus fern. Ferns tend to do well in this high humidity environment. I'm following that up with a nice pop of color with this pink polka dot plant. Then it becomes a game of luck. I'm taking tons of trimmings of different types of palea and I'm just popping them in. Some of these will take, some of them will not, and that's just how it is. I'm adding in some finishing touches with some moss from my yard. Don't bake this, but to be safe, you can give it a good rinse. And finally, I'm adding in some java moss that I got from Josh's Frogs. Oh, and as a bonus, I've got this, uh... Yeah, that, it's a, it's a little bit tough to say, but it's a creeping vining plant and it might do well. Next, I'm adding springtails. This is maybe the most weird niche thing you're gonna need to find. Of course, it's optional, but I highly recommend it. You can also buy these on Josh's Frogs, but some pet stores that sell reptiles will also carry them. They're part of the decomposition cycle. These guys will eat mold and steal your girlfriend. It's entirely possible to make these using backyard materials with predator-prey relationships and a food web and all that, but they tend to be more chaotic and that's for a separate video. And finally, the most important liquid on the planet, water, specifically distilled water. This is where so many people mess up. If you do use bottled water, let it sit in the open for 24 hours to let any chlorine evaporate and do not over water. If there's condensation on both sides of your glass all day, you've overdone it. Let it air out a bit. You want to place your terrarium on a windowsill that gets indirect sunlight to avoid cooking the plants. Once we seal it, the only reason to open it will be to trim the plants, but it also won't hurt to let it get air every so often, especially in the beginning while it's settling in. Some of these setups will take off and some will implode. That's just how it is. Don't beat yourself up and try again. Mix up the plant species and the methods used in this video until something takes. And if we do burn and pollute ourselves into extinction, then maybe these jars will be all that we have left. Take care of this and I'll see you in 50 years or next week. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Yeah. Peace. What are you sitting on? Just a big rock. Oh, perfect.